Hello guys, I hope uh, everybody is able to hear me out. So today's session, we will start. Okay, before we start, please go ahead and hit like. Yes, I'll talk about distributions also. Don't worry. Okay, so just a quick announcement, everyone. Uh, okay, uh, today is the last day of stat session, and probably let's see in the future again. I may plan, but next week probably on Monday, if everything goes on fine, I'll also start uh, machine learning. Uh, you know the machine learning algorithms part. Understand in this uh, seven day session of machine learning, I'll discuss about all the machine learning algorithms. Probably I cannot include practicals. See, practicals are already there in my YouTube channel. The reason why I'm not saying why I'm not planning to include because see, it'll take time to cover up, you know. So I don't want to take one session to two to three hours and probably do it. Okay. So. Uh, Aditya, I think. Uh, the status uh, is already replied like every 24 hours you get the status with respect to one era now uh, just a quick announcement uh, as i said mostly from monday i don't know whether i'll be starting on monday or not but i'll make a sure announcement of that we will be covering up all the machine learning algorithms that is what we are going to do okay and uh, yeah uh, anup i've already shared the code with the backend team they will probably upload it tonight okay so please uh, make sure that uh, uh, you know uh, yes and there will be a lot of things that are going to come up okay uh, because many people will discuss about different different things so they want the things and today is the last session of stats qq plot i have already uploaded in one of the video again it will probably take 15 to 20 minutes uh, in explaining everything again right so i think from the playlist you can definitely see there is something called as transformation so today is the seventh day. Now the first topic that we will discuss about P value and significance value. See yesterday we had a lot of confusion regarding this, right? So today I'm going to talk about the exact relationship between this P value and significance value because from the tests that we were doing, you know, uh, uh, we were seeing that, okay, most of the tests from that test, how do we derive this P value? That is what I'm actually going to discuss about it and practically also one example will be shown then we'll move towards distribution okay first we will discuss about central limit theorem central limit theorem or uh, then we are going to discuss about distributions like uh, bernoulli's distribution bernoulli distribution then fifth uh, we are basically going to discuss about binomial distribution uh, and then sixth, we'll also be see something called as Pareto's distribution. So we'll try to complete up all these things. And again, guys, uh, please, uh, uh, as you all know, iNeuron has already come up with this one neuron uh, platform where we are providing all the tech courses for lifetime in just one price. That is 7080, right? And uh, if you feel this is more, use Krish 10. Okay, to get 10% discount. I would suggest try it, try it, you know, because this platform will be quite amazing. Okay, Bonani, please don't, don't spam. I'm going to, otherwise you'll not be able to message it. Okay, so 10% discount you'll be able to get it by using this code that is Krish10. All the information regarding the course is given in the, uh, in the description of this particular video. Okay, I'll include log normal also, right? Log normal distribution, right? So uh, we'll start in another one minute. Yes, uh, poison distribution also I'll be discussing. Don't worry. Poison, uh, Pareto distribution, there is something called as power law. We'll discuss about it. Okay. So one, one final thing that is pending is called as F test which is also called as ANOVA test. This will take one hour time guys just to do this. I will upload a separate video. Okay, I'll upload a separate video 
on the same okay so please uh, we will be doing all these things and let's say that in ANOVA uh, I'll upload a separate video because this is going to take more than one hour it is important because there are multiple steps to complete this F test okay and yes this seven days statistics is more than sufficient for data science whatever we have learned uh, there is some videos that you have to check to how to do practical implementation with respect to uh, transformation like how do you transform the data based on one distribution to the other distribution and everything okay so yes support us to become the most affordable education edtech company okay so that is the reason why i'm telling you in 7080 you are getting many things as such so let's start the class so yesterday how many people had confusion with respect to p value and significance value today i will show you how you will derive the p value okay so we are basically going to see how do we derive the p value and what is the relationship between p value and significance value okay so this all things we will be discussing Let's take a problem statement. The problem statement, uh, I'm going to take it off as Z test. Okay. And uh, let's let's take the, let's write down the question. Before that, everybody ready? Take up your book and pen. I've already discussed about permutation and combination, guys, in the previous session. Okay. So quickly, just say me, you are ready. I'll start solving the problem and hit like. Okay. Let's will make this last session an amazing session okay so let's go ahead and let's try to understand the basic difference between p value and significance value okay so quickly are you ready just give me a thumbs up and then probably i'll start okay okay perfect many people are ready so let me write down the question the question is nothing but it is very simple the average We'll do a Z test problem and then we'll try to derive this. The average weight of all residents in, let's say, in Bangalore city, in Bangalore city is 168 pounds or 168 pounds, let's say, okay? So we take a sample, now we take a sample, okay, one, one data I have missed. So over here the average weight of all residents in Bangalore city is 168 pounds with a standard deviation, with a standard deviation 3.9, okay. Now, what we are saying, we take a sample, we take a sample of 36 individuals, we take a sample of 36 individuals and the mean is 169.5 pounds, okay? So, from this information, we really need to check whether, whether the sample is being able to tell us the weights are same or not. Okay, so this is what it is given and our confidence interval is basically 95 percentage. So, what test we can definitely use for this guys? Quickly say, what test we can definitely use it? Okay, Gautam, you can make it kgs also. Right? So, Z test, right? So, over here, you know what is my, what is your mean? My mean is 168 points. The standard deviation is 3.9. The X bar is nothing but 169.5 and my N sample is greater than 36. And obviously, my N sample is given, my population standard deviation is given. So, I am going to basically use Z test. Very good. 
the alpha value is 0 0.05 1 minus 95 percent is 10 0 0.05 okay now let's go ahead and solve this particular problem so what is your null hypothesis mean is equal to 168 what is your alternate hypothesis your mean is not equal to 168 okay okay then what we do we basically come to the second step where we specify our alpha 0 0.05 the third step we basically find out our decision boundary so my decision boundary is quickly how much it is nothing but it is this graph it is a two-tailed test it can be greater than 168 less than 168 so here i have basically 0 0.025 here i have 0 0.025 here i have 95 percent now, what is this value that I can get from the Z table that we see? What is what is what is the value that we can we are getting with respect to Z table that we see? Anybody? Can I say 1.96 plus minus 1.96? Yes. Do I get this? Yes or no? Everybody, if you open a Z table. With respect to 1 minus 0 0.025, you will be getting 0 0.9750, right? So, we are going to check this area of curve and usually we get 1.96 and minus 1.96, okay? Now, the next step, I hope everybody is clear because we have already done this in our previous session, okay? Next step, we do the, that is my fifth step, we calculate the Z test. Now, Z test formula is very much simple. I hope everybody remembers it. X minus mu divided by standard deviation of root n. What is X? What is X? X is nothing but it is. Average, 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 average. Okay. 169.5 minus minus 168 divided by what is standard deviation 3.9 root by 169.5 guys not one root of 36 right so here we are basically going to get 169.5 let's open the calculator so 169.5 minus 168 which is nothing but 1.5 1.5 divided by 3.9 multiplied by 6 right so what it is what it is guys 5 multiplied by 6 divided by 3.9 it is 2.307 okay so through point three zero seven so right now let's go to our decision rule my z value is two point three zero seven is it greater than is it greater than one point nine six it is greater than one point nine six so we reject the null hypothesis fine All right but this is already we have done many number of times okay we have done many number of times but now one step will go ahead this is fine this is one way of solving this problem but where does p value comes into existence okay where does p value comes into existence in this particular case now what it is saying is that initially initially my this graph i was checking it for this to this where it was plus 1.96 minus 1.96 and obviously I got 2.307 so it is falling somewhere here right it is falling somewhere here right if I'm if I'm considering 2.307 it is falling somewhere here it is on the top hand side 
right? So we are rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, if I really want to find out the p value, what I am actually going to do, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this. And now my curve will be a little bit bigger because based on this, I got the z value as 2.307. And here also I got minus 2.307 because both are symmetrical, right? Now the next step what I will do, I will take out my z table. I will take out my z table and I'll try to find out what is those values with respect to my z score, with respect to my z score, with respect to my z score of how much it is? 2.307, 2.307, right? So what I'm going to do over here, 2.3, I'll check based on this Z score, what is the area under the curve? What is this specific area? What is this specific area? I really need to find out, right? And I don't know what is the area right now. So I will go ahead and calculate it. Now, based on 2.307, okay? So 2.3 is here and 07. If I say 07, it is somewhere here, right? So 2.307, I am getting somewhere around 0 0.9911. Do you see this guys? 0 0.9911. Is everybody getting it? Yes. I hope everybody is able to understand what I am getting over here. Right? 0 0.9911. Right? So what I am getting over here? It is nothing but 0 0.9911. So here, based on this, my area under the curve is basically 0 0.99 triple 1. I hope I am writing it right. 0 0.2.3.99 triple 1. I hope everybody understood this. So this with respect to the area under the curve, I am actually getting this. Right? Is clear? Everybody is clear with this or not? Just tell me. Yeah? If you are clear, then only you will be able to understand the further things. Okay, now understand one thing. If I subtract with one, see point nine nine triple one is basically the area under the curve of this particular curve. Now, if I subtract this with this, how much I will be getting? How much I will be getting? So, what is the value that I will be getting? I will be getting one minus point nine nine triple one. Right. So how much I am getting? I am getting 0 0.0081. So this area is nothing but 0 0.0089 and this is nothing but 0 0.0089, right? So I am getting 0 0.0089, 0 0.0089, right? So this, you can see this, 889, sorry, it is 889, 889. So here I get 89, here also I am getting 89, right? Now, according to the p-value, now see this, this middle one is 0 0.9911. If I add up all this particular value, I should be getting one. And if you add it up, I'm probably you'll be getting one. P value is nothing but I have to add this area of curve of this tail and this tail because it is two tail. I have to add this up and then this will basically give my P value. 0 0.0089. So once I add this particular value, so what I'm actually going to get, what I'm actually going to get, these guys, they are really irritating. They just, they don't come for studying. Instead, they come on, come for spamming. Okay. I, I, I like to remove these guys permanently from my channel. YouTube should come up with some kind of options, you know. So if I add up this two. So what I'm actually going to get, I'm actually going to get 0 0.01778, right? Is it not 0 0.889 divided by 2? Uh, no, because see, both the, uh, both the area are symmetrical. Understand one thing, both the area are symmetrical. If I'm getting one value over there, okay? If I'm getting one value over there, probably I'll be able to see that specific part, right? Because this part is symmetrical to this part. Do you think it is divided by two?
do you think it is divided by 2 no i don't think so it should be divided by 2 it should it, it is basically considered at this part and this part right something like this is it is it okay just a second 0.99111 oh yeah should we divide by 2 yes yes then only probably i will be able to okay so probably we are getting more than one so over here i'm getting 2.307 2.307 is greater than 1.96 with respect to 2.3007 i am actually getting the value as 0 0.9911 okay so 1 minus 0 0.9911 will be nothing but oh point yeah i i i forgot to subtract 0 0.9911 so we are subtracting we are getting this if i divide by 2 so this will basically be your area just a second i will just rub this i will also rub this okay so we have to divide by 2 yes guys then otherwise the overall area of the curve will be greater than this so i am going to take this 0 0.0044 okay so 0 0.0044 this area 0 0.0044 now if we add it we will be getting till 1 okay perfect thank you everyone now in order to add the p get the p value i will take this area 44 plus 0 0.0044 now here you can see that i am getting 0 0.0088 right now this is basically my p value okay because based on the real z score that i have got i will be deriving my p value from here okay now obviously we know that it, we have to reject the null hypothesis now from the p value also we can actually verify here, now this p value is obviously less than 0 0.05, right, which is my significance value. So, obviously, 0 0.0088 is less than 0 0.05. So, what happens over here? We basically reject the null hypothesis. We reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So, here we are rejecting the null hypothesis. Suppose, if this p value is greater than 0 0.05 okay again spammers everywhere there are spammers really okay so now we are going to reject the null hypothesis now in this particular case we are rejecting the null hypothesis over here okay always understand one two important points one is p value is less than your significance value i hope you understood how to calculate the p value right so if this is less than or equal to the significance value this means we have to reject the null hypothesis that basically means okay if the p value is greater than significance value then what we do we fail to reject the null hypothesis we fail to or accept the null hypothesis we fail to reject the null hypothesis now it is clear guys from the yesterday's session now you can try out in every problem that we have probably discussed this many days now is it clear everyone now is it clear Do you want to try with t-test also once? Do you want to try with t-test also? You can also try it with t-test. Whatever you want, you can try with it. Right? But I hope everybody is understanding, right? Yes? The Z table part wala short me samjai. Okay. See guys, whenever we have a Z table, right? Right now, one thing is that first of all, I'll check with 0 0.025. 1 minus 0 0.025 is 0 0.9750. So if I go and see probably somewhere, you'll be able to see 0 0.9750 where it is here. So it is nothing but plus 1.9 and this is 6, right? But we saw that our real Z score was coming as 2.37. 
right? 2.37, 2.307 or 2.37, 2.30. What was our uh, this one value with respect to this? 2.30. So I think I messed it up. Or what? 2.30 is this one. Okay, guys, 2.30 is this one. I took 2.307. Okay, so again, there was a confusion over here. You can also take this one. See, 1, 1 minus 0.9828. 1 minus 0.9828. You can also do this. 1 minus 0.9828. So if I subtract this, 1 minus 0.9828. 1 minus 0.9828. So I'm actually going to get 0 0.0172 if I divide by 2 this will be 0 0.0086 okay so you you can take this up okay again I'm going to repeat this okay let's say I'm, I'm, I'm planning to repeat it okay fine not a problem see initially what I got my value was this right I got this as minus 1.96 this as plus 1.96 right but based on the Z score calculation, how much we got with respect to Z score calculation? Here you can see I got 2.307. Okay, 2.307. So here I'm actually going to get 2.30. Okay, let's take this. So obviously my, my Z is 2.30. It is greater than 1.96. So I've told you we have to reject the null hypothesis in this case. This is with the help of Z score. Okay. Reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do? Let's calculate the p-value. Now in order to calculate the p-value, okay, what I will do? I will rub this and I'll try to find out the area with respect to this z score. That is 2.30. So plus 2.30 minus 2.30. And I will try to find out what is this area. And based on this, I will be able to find out this area also. Okay. So let's go ahead in the Z table now. So this is my Z table 2.30. Okay, 2.30. So here is my value 0.98. See this guys. I'm again repeating it 2.30. Right? This is my Z square value. So 0.98928. Okay. So here I'm actually getting 0.9828. Right, so this is my area under the curve 0 0.9828. I guess 0 0.9828 only 2.3 point, 0 0.9892. 0 0.9892. Okay, Point 0.989289289928. Okay, now when I subtract 1 minus. 1. Uh, 0.9828 then I will be getting this area and this area right since I will have to get this particular area so I have to subtract with the whole one so if I go and calculate now 1 minus 0.98928 so it is nothing but 0 0.0171072 now understand this is not one tail test. This is two tail test. So I have to divide the area from here to here also. Right. So that is the reason why I divide by two. So I'm going to divide by two. So I'm actually going to get this as 0 0.00. Just a second. 1 minus 0 0.98928 divided by two. So it is nothing but 0 0.005. 36 then 0 0.00536 in p value i will add this two term okay understand guys what i am actually trying to do you have to check out the z table so if i add this probably then i will be getting some value and then check whether this is less than uh, significance value, less than alpha, less than or equal to alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis. And obviously, this case also, it will be less than this one. 
एवरीबडी क्लियर Mammoth bilki, it is two tail test, right? So that is the reason I divided by two. Everybody clear? Yes. Okay, perfect. Don't worry, I'll make a dedicated video in my YouTube channel for the same problem statement, okay? Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's discuss about the distribution part, okay? Why you did not take 3.307 table? There is no th uh, 2.307, see, it is 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39 okay everybody clear now Okay. Okay. Do you want to solve more problems in this? I'll be happy to solve. Ye problem nahi samajh mein aaya kisi ko. Same thing hai na? How to understand whether it is a two-tail test or not? That is what is I am saying, right? In two-tail test, we don't, you don't, see, <laughs> this is the last day of this thing, right? I have repeated again and again, right? I have repeated again and again all these particular problem statements, right? Okay, let's solve one more problem. Let's see. Let's solve this problem. So, uh, the average age of a college, of a college is 24 years, okay, with a standard deviation, with a standard deviation 1.5, okay. So, this is a college over here. Please, guys, focus over here, otherwise you will be confused throughout your life, okay? So, average age of a college is 24 years with a standard deviation of 1.5, okay? Now, what I am actually going to do over here is that I am just going to say that, okay, fine, uh, the average age of the uh, college is this much, this much. So, uh, we take a sample of 35 students. Let's say that the mean, the mean, I have given the mean, right, over here. Uh, we take a sample of 35 students and uh, we find out that the mean is, the mean is 25 years. Then with alpha as 0 0.05, that is the confidence interval as 95%, okay. Okay. With alpha as one point, uh, alpha as 0 0.05 and confidence interval, do the age vary? Okay, so this is the question. Now do it, guys, quickly. H0, you'll say mean is equal to 24. H1, you'll say mean is equal to, mean is not equal to 24, right? 
you know their standard deviation it is 1.5 you know your n value it is 35 let's take it as 36 okay 36 this is 36 okay let's consider this as 36 so that your calculation becomes easier 36 right and then your x bar is 25 right and your alpha value is 0 0.05 okay now tell me whether this is a two tail test or one tail test first of all think over it guys you really need to be patient in solving this problem okay i know half half big knowledge will not come into use okay it's a two tail test right so here you have your alpha as 0 0.05 now if i make my confidence interval my decision tree sorry my decision over here this will be 0 0.0 25. Why 0.025? This 0.05 will be divided into two regions since it is two tail test. If it is a one tail test, focus over here only. No, focus over here only to solve it. Why you don't have to worry about all those things? You know. Then let's go and solve with respect to z score. Z score x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation by root n. So what is my x bar? It is nothing but 25. 25 minus 24 divided by 1.5 multiplied by 6 right so it is 1 multiplied by 6 divided by 1.5 go and calculate it go and calculate it 1 multiplied by 6 divided by 5 so it is nothing but 1.2 the z score is 1.2 you know the decision boundary what is the decision boundary plus 1.96 plus 1.96 right now you are getting 1.2 okay so if you are getting if you are getting 1.2 then obviously 1.2 is less than 1.96 should we reject or accept the null hypothesis 4 are we getting 4 oh sorry it is 4 extremely sorry 4 right now if you are getting 4 the 4 is greater than 4 is greater than 1.96 so we reject null hypothesis we reject the okay haan bhai ab maar hi do tum log ho gaya galti yaar we are doing it right you got the answer great amazing congratulations you have won a nobel prize <laughs> by telling me that I have done a mistake. Okay. Now what you are going to do for this particular 4? You have got a 4 value, right? So this will be your plus 4. This will be your minus 4. Now go to the Z table. Try to find out what is the 4 value. Right? Right? What is your 4 value? Right? So go over here. Try to find out what is 4. It is 0.99997, 497s, right? So it is 0.9997, 49s, right? 99997. It is not max till 3, no? Max till 4 is there. Okay? So I will go and subtract this to this. Now if I subtract this to this, what will happen? One minus point nine 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 seven. So what I'm getting, I'm getting basically, and I have to divide this by two since this is, since this is what, two tail test. So this side will basically be my area as point zero zero four zeros one five, and this will be my area as point four zeros one five, and this middle one will basically be point nine 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 seven. Now, what is my p value? My p value is 0.9997. 
पॉइंट जीरो 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 वन फाइव प्लस पॉइंट जीरो 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 वन फाइव सो वट दिस विल बी दिस विल बी नथिंग बट द सेम थिंग पॉइंट फोर जीरो थ्री पॉइंट फोर जीरो थ्री now my p value is obviously very very lesser than significance value so what we have to do we have to reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis ali hasan you are not attending my sessions i cannot repeat again and again why this is two tail or one tail understand the question no the average value can be greater than 24 it can be less than 24 right it can be equal to 24 so it becomes a two tail test did i say that did the age increase right if if probably i said that the age is increasing at that point of time i can definitely say that it is a one tail test ab samajh mein aaya everybody difficult to make everybody understand and satisfy that is a problem okay energy is done i don't know what will happen when i take live sessions on machine learning algorithm i have to convince people so here you can definitely say that with the sample size that we have taken definitely we will not be able to conclude that the mean is that much right so let's go ahead with log normal distribution i have already discussed about log normal distribution but again i am repeating it okay इससे ज्यादा कोई नहीं समझा सकता ऑब्वियसली कोई नहीं समझा सकता यार माय थ्रोट इज लाइक देखो गर्म पानी पी रहा हूँ मैं देखो गर्म पानी पी रहा हूँ <laughs> ऐसा हो गया है गर्म पहला दिन रेड बुल में था उसके बाद अब लास्ट के दिन गर्म पानी में हूँ लाइक्स भी नहीं करते लोग भी नहीं आते राइट right? ओके फाइन नाउ ये आयुष इज सेइंग इट शुड नॉट बी डिवाइड बाय टू ओके ओके गाइस सो लॉग नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यूजुअली लॉग नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इट विल हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ शेप ऑब्वियसली वी हैव सीन लॉट ऑफ एग्जांपल्स लाइक वेल्थ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन राइट or uh, you can consider ayush mera is saying 1.96 kahan se aaya this is like the entire ramayana is finished and he is saying who is sita <laughs> 1.96 kaisa aaya bhai kaisa aata hai 1.96 batao ye 1.96 kaisa aata hai hmm ye alpha value ke basis mein aata hai na bhai ha ayush पूरा रामायण खत्म हो गया तुम तीन दिन से यही चीज करवा रहा हूं मैं ओ माय गॉड यार सिर्फ पढ़ाना नहीं होता है रिवाइज भी करना होता है चीजों को वीडियोस यूट्यूब में भी डालते हो हटा दो क्या यूट्यूब से वीडियोस तो है ओके अरे बहुत कॉमेडी कॉमेडी हमारे साथ मिलते सोचो हम लोग ने इतना सारा ऑप्शन दे दिया वन न्यूरॉन में ऐसे ऐसे मैसेजेस आते हैं ना हम लोगों को रिक्वेस्ट आता है कि लाइक वी गेट रिक्वेस्ट सेइंग दैट क्रिश अपलोड फ्रेंच वीडियो ऑल्सो अपलोड जर्मन वीडियो ऑल्सो सम गाय सेइंग मी अपलोड डेटा साइंस इन तमिल इन तेलुगु ओके लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स राइट सो लॉट ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट इज रिली कम एंड वी आर रियली पीपल फेसिंग कंपनी राइट वी हैव टू हैंडल यू नो सो मैनी क्वेरीज It is so tough, guys. So tough. Daily, we are replying to two thousand queries. Okay, two thousand queries. Just imagine, people will say, uh, okay, they they will probably hear name from somewhere, some technology name. 
and they will come and directly say uh, i want the course on this technology <laughs> okay we literally have to go and google that technology and then think okay this thing also we need to upload like that right so course request too much funny you know like this any kind of course request will come some guy will come and say that uh, okay i want uh, a course on this specific technology in my office they have told me to learn this you know so it is very very difficult very difficult trust me every day 2000 emails and uh, you will be saying you will be seeing that email no it's like oh my god why i am going home like that you will think aajkal to neend mein sapne mein bhi wahi cheez aate hain hmm okay so it is very difficult guys trust me ab people log bhi kuch samajhte nahi hai aur aajkal da koi over neuron leta hai na pehla wo dekhta hai agar samjhe like if he is going to see aws okay he'll open aws course he will th- go throughout the entire topics okay he will go throughout the entire topics and he'll see that which topic is missing <laughs> he, he, he will go and see which topic is missing and he'll upload he'll raise a request saying that at that particular topic is the last of the course okay because we say that we are updating the courses right because we keep on adding more more things okay so that guy will go and write oh this topic is not there why have you not uploaded this topic oh no this comes in the advanced section then they'll never go throughout the entire course okay they will just go and see which topic is missing and then they'll try to raise a question on that specific topic it is it is like out of the box completely okay so this kind of situation will also come in your life uh, it's very difficult running a company aap logon ko to you'll think like hey krish you are doing this hey you are doing this आओ यू कम एंड वर्क इन आउ वन डे एज अ कंपनी बाल झड़ जाएंगे ठीक है पता नहीं चलेगा एक ही कपड़ों में दिखोगे ठीक है यू विल ओनली सी मी इन वन क्लोथ ओके गो एंड सी माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई एम जस्ट रिपीटिंग द क्लोथ्स ओके सो लाइक दिस काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन विल बी गेटिंग लॉट ओके इट इज इट इज लाइक लिटरली ओके दे बिफोर यू स्टडी वॉट हैपेड वी अपलोडेड फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ ब्लॉक चेन ठीक है then we uploaded second phase of blockchain okay two phases are done now suddenly a person will raise a query i need a course on metaverse also he doesn't know blockchain but he is raising a question on i need metaverse also okay so <laughs> i am saying bhai pehla pad to lo aa jayega metaverse bhi sab ko jaldi jaldi bhai chahiye sab kuch chahiye ha huh? it's like we are giving it for lifetime right bhai zindagi aaram se jiyo na आराम से क्वेश्चन पूछो आराम से कोर्स पूछो ठीक है नैन फर्स्ट दे विल गो एंड सी व्हाट ऑल टॉपिक्स आर नॉट देयर व्हाट ऑल माय कोर्सेज आर नॉट देयर एंड दे विल जस्ट अपलोड दो राइट सो बहुत जिंदगी बहुत कठिन हो गया है ओके नाउ इफ आई एम इफ आई एम डूइंग लाइव सेशंस आल्सो ना देन दे विल से दैट व्हाई यू आर डूइंग लाइव सेशंस यार काम छोड़ दूं कम्युनिटी सेशंस हम लोग करते हैं ना काम छोड़ दूं मैं बहुत सारे बहुत सारे सो यू विल फाइंड लॉट ऑफ पीपल सो वी हैव बिकम वेरी गुड इन टॉकिंग विद पीपल्स एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग द प्रॉब्लम ओके लाइक दिस इट थिंग्स हैपेंस यू नो सो आई डोंट नो लाइक सीरियसली सीरियसली कोई नहीं यू सॉ यू सी माय फेस इन द फर्स्ट क्लास एंड नाउ सी द फेस इन द सेवेंथ क्लास आई एम लिटरली टायर्ड एट टूडे सैटरडे ओके तो so, कौन सा भी टेक्नोलॉजी पढ़ लो भाई शांति नहीं मिलेगी ठीक है इट्स लाइक शांति मिलेगी ही नहीं ओके okay? उसके बाद एक बंदा एक वन वन गाय इज रेज द कोर्स रिक्वेस्ट आई वॉन्ट हाउ टू रन अ यूट्यूब चैनल फ्रॉम कृष्णा एक लाइक दिस काइंड ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट विल कम ओ माई गॉड ओके लेट्स गो टू द लॉन्ग नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन so the example is wealth distribution have you seen wealth distribution there are very less number of people who will be having huge wealth and they will be normal salaried people like me you know who will be in this region okay we cannot come in this region because we are a customer facing client <laughs> okay so these all things are actually there so this was the example of log normal distribution now suppose i say that if uh, if y is a random variable that belongs to a log normal distribution with mean as with some mean 
let's say that this is there it belongs to a log normal distribution then if i apply if i apply log of y then it should follow a normal distribution okay so if it is satisfying this condition we can say a distribution is basically in this kind of log normal distribution so log normal distribution i have already discussed in the previous section also a lot of examples are there people writing comment session uh, people writing bigger comments people writing there will be very less number of people who write big comments right big comments so this is one example okay and uh, again this is also i have uploaded a detailed video in my stats playlist let's go to the next distribution if i say that next distribution is there so i will talk about bernoulli's distribution bernoulli's distribution okay so bernoulli distribution see guys that only i'm telling you now some people are saying they are improving i know yes we are trying to improve this particular platform just imagine just imagine on the idea right on what we are working a one tech platform where you just pay some affordable money and you get it throughout any course that you want to raise you can raise a request i am i mean any course literally any course that does not mean literally literally any course okay so you'll be saying oh, i require i require uh, some people have also raised uh, i want some kind of gaming uh, courses also then we have accepted it and we are probably also uploading it so it's like see a company grows by the kind of things that we provide a company becomes successful with the kind of things and services that we provide and this is really mind blowing services that what we have included you know but some people you know they like oh my god they they literally <laughs> i don't know like if you are somewhere in uh, you know like all the services see just understand the importance okay the thing is that what problems you are facing right now you did your college you did your engineering you did any kind of degree every year you invested so much of money just imagine lakhs and lakhs of money you invested right how much money did you invest in your education guys just tell me literally you can comment me let's let's discuss all these things later on okay bernoulli binomial and all they are simple distribution just imagine how much money you have invested in your education just imagine how much money you may have probably invested in your education okay every ma every year right so when you are in college how much you, you have invested right like lakhs and lakhs of rupees you have invested guys if i consider your hostel fees and everything over here right it's quite huge i i i got i got my i got my engineering seat which is completely for free based on merits right there also i used to get some kind of scholarship okay but i can understand because i used to see my friends who have invested huge amount of money huge amount of money and the money money is precious guys because uh, see if i see people if i see my friends parents who are like normal from middle class background they used to come and take the cash and come and give it to the college people i used to feel really bad about it you know because a mid for a middle class family the money is quite huge that specific money is quite huge okay very very huge right it is very huge guys right so just understand that money that is earned at that point of time it's very very important how it can be used in various ways ab ho hum log seedha seedha ja ke jahan de de rahe hain i don't know whether you and the return of investment is very less when you are investing that much money now when when we say 7000 they are saying oh krish this is a huge amount of money you know yeah entire bhai tumhara pura college ka degree complete ho raha hai idhar your entire college is getting completed over here that is the plan of one neuron you know this people do not understand and i definitely cannot make everybody understand okay you, there are many people who will say that krish is doing business bhai business nahi kar raha hu literally i can just take my youtube channel daily upload one video i can survive throughout my life i can do sponsorships i can do multiple things i can earn huge amount of money right many people come for me for sponsorships i can come and do it you know an integrated video will give me a good amount of money right but just understand but i see some comments from people saying that krish you are doing business 
या बिजनेस करना होता है एक लाख रुपये रखता ना एक लाख रुपये रखता मैं कोर्स का फीस दो लाख रुपये रखता कोर्स का फीस मजबूर कर देता अब वन ईयर ऑन प्लेटफॉर्म में सेवन थाउजेंड रुपीज है यू हैव हंड्रेड प्लस कोर्सेज एंड वी विल मेक श्योर दैट इन द अपकमिंग टू टू थ्री मंथ्स वी आर गोइंग टू मेक दैट पर्टिकुलर कोर्स अमेजिंग एंड एक्सटेंसिव वेर वी आर इंक्लूडिंग प्रॉब्ली एवरीथिंग राइट अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग सो समटाइम्स इट बिकम्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू मेक पीपल अंडरस्टैंड दे डोंट नो दे आई थिंक द डिसीजन मेकिंग स्किल्स हैज कंप्लीटली गॉन नाउ डेज आई डोंट नो वट पीपल थिंक बट वट काइंड ऑफ डिसीजन मेकिंग दे हैव टू डू दिल डू बट एट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे फाइनली आई गेट अ लॉट ऑफ मैसेजेस इन लिंकड इन एंड ऑल सेंग दैट क्रेश आई एम फेसिंग दिस प्रॉब्लम आई हैव डन दिस आई हैव इन्वेस्टेड सो मच मनी बट नथिंग आई एम नॉट एबल टू गेट जॉब यू नो सो दिस इज वॉट इज द डिसीजन मेकिंग स्किल्स राइट पीपल हैव गॉन अब वहाँ पर हम क्या बोले उनको आई कैन ओनली गाइड राइट आई कैन गो एंड से दोगे ओके यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड डैट मच मनी गो एंड फॉलो माई फ्री रिसोर्स इन यूट्यूब एंड ट्राई टू इम्प्लीमेंट a uh, lot of projects and then try to get the job that is what i can say what what more i can say everything you know how much videos i have uploaded in my channel more than 1300 plus right so these things are very much necessary guys uh, i know i have taken your 10 minutes which was i don't know many people will then again say krish why are you wasting time oh, we are good decision makers okay okay so let's talk about bernoulli distribution okay let's start away and talk about bernoulli distribution now in bernoulli distribution you can see that uh, it's more about p and q it's more about see whenever you have a bernoulli distribution that basically means you need to understand there are only two outcomes so if i go and probably open it over here in bernoulli distribution there are specifically two outcomes okay two outcomes basically means that it can be either zero or one let's say that i have two outcomes of zero or one but i really need to find out the probability you know when when we need to focus on probability with respect to bernoulli distribution we define by two values one is p and one is q suppose i say i'm considering an experiment which is called as tossing a coin in tossing a coin i know the what is the probability of head let's say that i am getting probability of head as 0.5 so this will basically become my p value okay when i talk about the p value q value it will become 1 minus p okay that basically means if the probability of head because in when when we are probably tossing a coin okay there are two choices either you get head or either you get tail okay so when i say probability of head is 0.5 so this is what one outcome probability is there right what about the other outcome so that is nothing but 1 minus p so here if i have 0.5 then q will be 1.5 then this will be 0.5 okay suppose i do not have a fair coin i do not have a fair coin do not have a fair coin now in this particular case and this is only related to single trial single trial not multiple trials okay single trial distribution now let's say that i do not have a fair, uh, fair coin let's say that my probability of head is 0.3 now in this particular case what will be my probability of tail this is basically p then my probability of tail will obviously be q which is nothing but 1 minus p which is nothing but 1 minus 0.3 0.7 okay so this is basically 0.7 over here you can see over here now similarly if i go and probably discuss with respect to this here you can see that a bernoulli distribution named after swiss mathematician jacobi bernoulli bernoulli as a discrete probability distribution okay now here you see this okay three examples of bernoulli distribution here the probability of x is equal to 0 with one of the outcome is 0.2 so we are drawing this graph this line see this will come as 0.2 this will come as 0.8 okay this will come as 0.2 this will come as 0.8 okay so 0.8 0.8 okay over here next next outcome you can see over here is 0.8 and 0.2 so this is how you basically create in this 0.8 and this is 0.2 in the green color you can see 0.5 and 0.5 so this is my 0.5 and 0.5 now understand one important thing okay whenever we draw this kind of like this kind of experiment if we draw in the form of graphs on the left hand side obviously you know what will be there with respect to this and the right hand side there will be probabilities okay so this is basically 0.2 0.3 0.4 0.5 0.6 0.7 0.8 0.9 0.10 0.11 0.12 0.13 0.14 0.15 0.16 0.17 0.18 0.19 0.20 0.21 0.
point four, right? Point six, point eight, and one. Okay. Now suppose let's consider that I have three. Uh, I have one coin over here. This one coin is basically head. This is basically tail. Now if I try to show you with respect to the probability of head and tail, I can basically draw. Suppose if I say this probability of head is point five, so I can draw this line like this. I can basically draw this line with respect to this and this. Just a second. Then if I am drawing this line, then probability of tail will also be 0.5. Okay. Suppose if I say the probability of head of or of of not a fair coin is nothing but 0.8, then we will draw a line like this. Okay. Here I can basically say then what will happen if this is 0.8, then this will become 0.2, right? So this is how we basically draw this, and this is not a probability density function. Understand? This is a probability mass function. Probability mass function. In probability density function, it is completely different. Probability density function is for continuous variable. This is specifically for categorical variables. So this probability mass function that we have over here, we will basically say it as PMF. Before we used to say it as PDF, right? So whenever we have this kind of variables, categorical variables, at that point of time, okay, this is basically called as probability mass function, okay. So I hope everybody is able to understand with respect to this. Now let's go to the Wikipedia page. <coughs> so here you can see probability mass function, and the same thing probability mass function is saying. If k is equal to zero, I will write q is equal to one minus p p if k is equal to one, right? And the PMF is basically defined in this particular manner. Any probability that I want to form, I want to find out. This is how the formula is basically utilized. Okay. We we really need to know only this much things about the distribution and one probability formula. Okay. So this was with respect to Bernoulli distribution. Now let's go ahead and try to discuss about binomial distribution. See, binomial distribution is also very much good. Till now we discussed about single trial, right? Single trial. Whenever we take up multiple trial, then it becomes a binomial distribution, right? Inside this, let me write it down over here. So if I go and see with respect to binomial distribution, binomial distribution says that obviously with respect to every trial, there will be a Bernoulli distribution. Bernoulli distribution, but here we have multiple trials multiple trial okay that basically means we have the combination of many bernoulli distribution over here okay suppose in this trial my probability of head is this much suppose in one more trial i will go and write probability of head is 0 0.6 this is 0 0.4 like this i will be having many trials combined together in one kind of binomial distribution Anu Srivastava, I told you, right, whenever you have a categorical variable and whenever we try to draw this kind of diagram, then it is called as a probability mass function. In, in the case of a continuous variable, we have probability density function, okay? I hope everybody is able to understand, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Just let me know if you are able to understand this or not. So if I go and probably see this, you can see that the binomial distribution is given by two notation n comma p okay so n is nothing but number of trials p is nothing but success or probability for each trial where q is equal to 1 minus p okay and this is the formula with respect to the probability mass function to calculate the probability of a binomial distribution okay so <coughs> i hope everybody is able to understand it okay now this is done now let's go to one very important distribution which is called as Pareto distribution. Pareto distribution, Wikipedia. I'll again open Wikipedia because it will be amazing. Now Pareto distribution is a non-Gaussian, it is not a Gaussian distribution, okay? It looks something like this, okay? One application of Pareto distribution is nothing but power law distribution. So if I show you power law. So here everybody see this diagram with respect to this. I am just going to take a snippet of it. We will discuss about this. This is something very much important. Okay. Let us let's paste it over here. 
Now, in this particular case, when we are discussing about power law distribution, let's see that what important information we can take out from this. Power law distribution basically says that you have to remember this rule, which is called as 80-20 rule. Okay. You can see that this is probably my 80 percentage of this entire value and this is my 20 percentage of the entire value. Okay. My x axis may be something, my y axis may be something. Okay. But understand the 80 of one kind of distribution will be falling here and remaining 20 will be falling here. Let's say some, take some examples. Okay. Now, suppose if I say that 80 percentage of the wealth is distributed with 20 percentage of the people. Okay. The second question, any example, any other examples? Just think of any other example. Any other example, 80 percentage of the wealth is distributed with 20 percent of the Can I say 80 percentage of the company projects are done by 20 percentage of the people? Are done by 20 percentage of the people. 20 percentage of the people in a team. Hota hai na ya? Right? Some more example. Okay. Let's take one more example. 80 percentage of sales is done by 20 percentage of the most famous product. 20 percentage of the famous product. Right? Any example? More. Okay? One more example I can take. 80 percentage of the match, cricket match, okay, let's say, is won by 20 percentage of the, 20 percentage of the team, right? 80 percentage of videos are completed by 20 percent, 80 percentage are serious out of all the 100 percent, <laughs> right? Like 80 percentage of the syllabus are completed by 20 percentage of the people, right? 80 percent spamming on YouTube video has been done by 20 percentage of the people. Yes, any kind of examples you can basically take. You can also consider salaries. You can also consider, yes, 80 percentage of oil coming from 20 percentage of the land. Amazing. Very nice. Very nice example. So whenever you have what this kind of distribution, it is called as power law distribution and this is also called as a Pareto distribution. Now listen to me one thing guys. This is something very much amazing. Right now this diagram that you see it looks something like this. Looks something like this right. If I extend this diagram and probably make it like this. If I probably extend this diagram. If I extend this diagram and make it like this. See this, this is a very important thing. Then what kind of distribution this is? What kind of distribution this is? This is my power law distribution. What distribution is this? This is not normal. This is, can I say this is log normal distribution? Log normal guys, not normal. The right hand side over here, this will get extended by a lot. Log normal distribution. Okay. Probably I did not draw the diagram properly, but it is a log normal. Log normal, right skewed data, something like this, let's say. Okay, so this specifically is a log normal distribution. Okay. 
so there is a very good relationship between log normal and power law distribution or pareto distribution okay so mathematically if i talk about you can also convert this distribution into normal distribution also okay and for this you have to watch one of my video which is called as transformation data transformation i think i will be able to find that video over here let's see just a second i will find out that particular problem still so all the different types of transformation in machine learning whether you can convert this or not so i have given the link you can check it out whenever you have time but remember this is a important video okay okay so definitely check out those video and probably this is what is basically spoken about it you know so that is called as pareto distribution with respect to this okay now guys uh, yes box cost transformation is basically used in order to convert this data into normal distribution so probably you will be able to see from that video link that i have actually given okay i can also show you the code so this is how the code looks like i i have covered everything guys now it's your time to flourish and learn everything see over here all the transformation normalization standardization scaling this 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 square root everything is given over here so this is here i have also discussed about qq plot so if i go and probably show you see so all the transformation is basically used i have used all the transformation in this you have to follow that video guys because it will probably take me one hour to explain all these things see this is what is qq plot is right reciprocal transformation logarithmic transformation then you have gaussian transformation this all transformation are the logarithmic reciprocal square root exponential transformation box cox transformation right so all this transformation is basically used in in the initial stages we basically apply with respect to all the features okay and then we will be able to can i say this distribution follows what what kind of distribution this image follows guys right tell me what kind of distribution this data follows just imagine so it is in the same link in the youtube channel that i have actually given what kind of distribution this follows this follows a pareto distribution a power law distribution right so we can basically use a box cost transformation to convert this data right so if you if you go through this you are well covered with respect to everything okay so i think uh, i was able to cover up most of the things in this 7 days session i hope you like this session okay and i hope you learn a lot now now it's time for you just to think more ahead solve multiple use cases and do some amazing work okay so this was the seven days how do you like to rate it and from monday i'm probably going to start i'm probably going to start machine learning algorithms tomorrow i'll take a rest and on monday i will announce it okay ha huh. one 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 thing i missed central limit theorem okay i'll discuss about central limit theorem okay central limit theorem so central limit theorem basically says that if i have a distribution that is either normal that is not normal or that is any kind of distribution that i have okay whenever we basically take up multiple samples let's say that i have this distribution or this distribution or this distribution if i take up some multiple samples let's say that n is greater than or equal to 30 if i start keep taking multiple samples from this particular data let's say that i have taken multiple samples like this 
like this up to n is greater than or equal to 30 like many many samples okay and for every sample if i start finding the mean okay mean if i start finding the mean like this up till xfm why i'm saying uh, n should be greater than or equal to 30 because the more greater than or equal to 30 the more the central limit theorem holds okay so if i take this entire data of this sample mean all this sample mean and if i populate it in the form of pdf then that basically says that it will get converted into a normal distribution so this will basically be a normal distribution all the sample mean will follow this sample mean will follow a normal distribution okay sample mean will follow a normal distribution yes so here you can see that whatever distribution it may be if we take some samples specifically n is greater than or equal to 30 for each and every sample if i try to find out the sample mean okay okay sample size so see sample size i told you it should be n is greater than or equal to 30 sample size the number of elements over here that we are picking should be greater than or equal to 30 and let's consider that we have taken m samples okay m samples can be anything okay but more the bigger value more better we will be able to solve this particular central limit theorem okay so here you will be able to see that as we go on doing this finally you will be able to see that if we populate all the sample mean we get this normal distribution initially whatever distribution that particular data may be it may be a log normal it may be normal it may be anything okay is it clear everybody with respect to this everybody clear yes now one assignment for you all will be poison distribution now you have got a lot of idea about data now okay you just go and search in wikipedia see the distribution shape this is also a non gaussian distribution okay it also follows the pareto distribution you can see in this way just go and check it out that's it okay so overall i hope you like this 7 days of stat session i know i am running a company but i would definitely like to give it to the community all the time in the upcoming classes we'll be having machine learning algorithms seven days live session okay then we will be having deep learning algorithms okay then probably we can take up flask seven days session and django seven days session right if you want mongodb sql that all things i'll try to plan because this year i'm planning to only take live sessions okay so all these kind of things we will be doing probably a series of blockchain session of seven days where i'll probably show you how to create your own blockchain and all everything so like this we will try to plan it seven seven days so that full week i'll be occupied and i'll not get one minute also to breathe okay just kidding <laughs> i get a lot of time to breathe so all these things we will try to do <clears throat> tomorrow i'll take some rest and probably announce this every day two algorithms will try to complete okay by this way we will be able to complete all the machine learning algorithms okay so i hope you liked it again for supporting us please join one neuron platform help us in innovating the tech world with the affordability and with the quality that we can provide i know we cannot satisfy each and every person okay there will be some people if we don't reply if you are one minute late they will kill us okay so it happens but no problem patience is virtue we say okay so uh, this kind of sessions we will do okay and uh, yeah please make sure that you subscribe krishna vlog channel there also i have started putting hindi videos in machine learning okay so please do that don't forget it and yes how was the overall session just rate it whatever rating you want to give me i will never say nothing okay i never say anything to my students
okay so now it's come like how was the entire session it was good right okay perfect ajay choudhary i use scribble ink scribble ink is the tool name you can see over here scribble ink okay so okay guys this was it from my side and yes uh, tomorrow announcement will be done with respect to machine learning i hope everybody joins and yes to hit the like button this was it from my side have a great day ahead thank you one doll bye bye keep on rocking keep on learning see you in machine learning live session bye bye thank you guys all the materials will be provided don't worry i will upload everything that i have with me okay thank you guys bye bye